My mother hates the idea of me being a war cameraman. Listen, um, I just spoke to, uh, to Dottie. Deep down, she's just waiting for the phone call from, from the office to say, you know, are you, you know, Desmond's mother, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. She always thinks that trouble follows me wherever I go, you know, considering I'm now in Indonesia. And uh, I came here, and two months later, Suharto had re resigned. The country was on fire. Thousands of people have been killed. And she calls me up and said, what's going on? You know, you're supposed to be taking you know, semi-retirement, and look, look what's happened. I think a lot of people would be quite happy for that man to be killed uh, so they can get that particular picture that they, that, that they want. I've got no idea. I've got no idea why we're doing this. Why photograph war? Is it possible to put an end to a form of human behavior which has existed throughout history by means of photography? The proportions of that notion seem ridiculously out of balance, yet that very idea has motivated me. For me, the strength of photography lies in its ability to evoke a sense of humanity. If war is an attempt to negate humanity, then photography can be perceived as the opposite of war. And if it's used well, it can be a powerful ingredient in the antidote to war. In a way, if an individual assumes the risk of placing himself in the middle of a war in order to communicate to the rest of the world what is happening, he's trying to negotiate for peace. Perhaps that's the reason why those in charge of perpetuating a war do not like to have photographers around. In the field, what you experience is extremely immediate. What you see is not an image on a page in a magazine 10,000 miles away with an advertisement for Rolex watches on the next page. What you see is unmitigated pain, injustice, and misery. It's occurred to me that if everyone could be there just once to see for themselves what white phosphorus does to the face of a child, or what unspeakable pain is caused by the impact of a single bullet, or how a jagged piece of shrapnel can rip someone's leg off, if everyone could be there to see for themselves the fear and the grief just one time, then they would understand that nothing is worth letting things get to the point where that happens to even one person, let alone thousands. But everyone cannot be there, and that is why photographers go there, to show them, to reach out and grab them and make them stop what they're doing and pay attention to what is going on 
to create pictures powerful enough to overcome the diluting effects of the mass media and shake people out of their indifference, to protest, and by the strength of that protest, to make others protest. Does it cause them any health problems? Asap bisa, asap belerang kan, bisa bikin mata perih juga. Ada ada untuk kesehatan, merusak kesehatan nggak? Oh, nggak ada. Misalnya nggak ada, Pak. Nggak ada. Oh, they they say they are coughing sometimes when they are there, but when they return, they will get something from Suhar, I believe, like a meal together with green porridge. The worst thing is to feel that as a photographer I'm benefiting from someone else's tragedy. This idea haunts me. It's something I have to reckon with every day because I know that if I ever allow genuine compassion to be overtaken by personal ambition, I will have sold my soul. The only way I can justify my role is to have respect for the other person's predicament. The extent to which I do that is the extent to which I become accepted by the other. And to that extent, I can accept myself. <laughs>